Alright, so I had suspected that I had a boost leak. Just turning this pressure down so that I can just put the hose. You'll see. You'll see. 20 is probably safe. Alright. So, every time I drove this thing, it sounded like there was a boost leak. I couldn't tell if that was just the sound of the thing or not. So I made this adapter. This is four inch. This guy here is four inch. So this is a three inch coupler with a um, clean out adapter and then a cap and then a bolt in um, valve, um, tire valve. So there is a leak. So it should only be 20 pounds. I heard it a minute ago. So I'm spraying down. Maybe there's not, maybe that was the, oh, you know what? I wonder if it's, uh, maybe that's out that I heard. Spraying down the intercooler boots. Oh. Yeah, see? So that one's loose. Not very loose, but it's loose. Oh yeah, look at it there. So boost leaks on diesels aren't very good because it means it's not getting the air that it needs. And then exhaust temperatures raise. This side looks, oh, well, there's even a little bit there too. Ever so tiny, maybe not. Nothing there. This is just soap and water. Good stuff to have around. I'm gonna pause this. Okay, so I set the compressor to 25 pounds. You, you gotta be careful about how much pressure you put in it. You know, a turbo, I'm guessing, doesn't even put 25 pounds into this thing. Um, in fact, there's a wastegate. Is this not a wastegate? Does not look like it has a wastegate. Oh yeah, it does under there. So there's a wastegate under there. That should open at a predetermined pressure. I don't know what that's set at. You know, it lets any over pressure basically you just escape out the exhaust pipe so um, and then you get these locking um, valve stem air chucks so that you can just roll with it and uh, you can hear it it's leaking like crazy so this uh, the inlet boot obviously is leaking pretty good so there's one um, the other side of it is leaking ever so slightly right there that one's so big it's not even making bubbles so that one's leaking the outside the outlet going into the intake that one's not not leaking bad this one doesn't look like it's doing anything but this guy man no wonder I can hear it hear it That thing's leaking like crazy. That's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird setup. It doesn't look like it's leaking. I hit a button. It doesn't look like it's leaking on the actual 
intake itself. Yeah, that's okay where it connects there, but it's where this black plastic sleeve connects to it. Watch this. Right down here. Look at that. You can see it, the camera actually better than I can. If I push down, it stops, but when I lift up, So I gotta figure out how that thing works. I don't know if that's all one piece or there's not a clamp on this. This is rubber, this is rubber, but this is plastic. So, um, and then gotta tighten that down. Yeah, that's a, that's a big leak. All right, got these lights done. Uh, I had three cab lights that I'd thrown up on the roof just to cover some holes from the original cab lights that were in the truck. And uh, I forgot I were up there, so I decided to wire them up. Um, I got some bulbs that look like I need to replace on the thing here. I disconnected the beeper because uh, I didn't realize how loud that was in that last video. So that's disconnected now. But uh, there's some lights. I still gotta do the passenger side headlight and turn signal parking light, but this side's done. This is a new 12 volt bulb. So I've got highs and lows out of the headlight. And then, uh, let me see if I can turn just the headlight off. And blinkers. So, spend a little couple, couple minutes after work here. Messing around with that, those lights. Get the other ones done here pretty quick and are home free. I forgot to mention one thing that really threw me through a loop. Um, these trucks come with this harness right here. And this is basically the harness that connects all the lighting to the back of the bus, the body of the bus. And you can see it's all broken out. Uh, backup ignition, left turn, right turn, identification, stop lights, the whole nine yards. So I was testing every single pin on here and I could not get the tail lights to, to mark up. And I'm testing the right pin. I cannot for the life of me figure out what the heck is going on. Well, it turns out um, International, uh, they have the stickers apparently that says, uh, I drive with my, my lights on for safety because, okay, so headlights are off. I turn the ignition on, lights. Headlights aren't even on. Ignition off, ignition on, ignition off, ignition on. But the headlights still work, so. Headlights on, headlights off, headlights on, headlights off. So it's kind of weird. The, uh, and the way this works too is, is this dims down you can see the gauge, oh, it's really hard to see. You can see the gauge dims down to a point where it doesn't have enough power to power the gauges. Like, the lights are still on. Oh man, it's really hard to see. Anyways, in real life, you can tell. How can I make that work? There you go. In real life, you can tell those lights are on, but then when you turn on, when you dim them up, they have enough power to operate the gauges. It's really weird. But anyways, 